Uh, my journey started in Compton, California. This is where I was born and where I was raised. Uh, spent my first 18 years there. Um, I was obviously uh, a big basketball fan as a kid and uh, used basketball as a tool for me to you know, provide for myself for the long haul. But um, I didn't always think that I could become a pro basketball player. Scholarship to Stanford, uh, spent three years there, um, had a, a pretty solid year my junior year, and uh, was able to probably that into uh, being a first round draft pick in the NBA to the Atlanta Hawks. One of the first, um, yeah, Greece. <laughs> I was one of the first, uh, first kind of, I guess, NBA players in their prime to go and take a contract over in Europe. And I did that, uh, it was a leverage move for me. Uh, it was uh, I was in a contract negotiation with Atlanta, and they just wouldn't budge, and I got a, a higher contract offer in Greece. Most guys wouldn't have left the NBA to go do that, but I did. It was just a gamble that I took, uh, and uh, ended up paying off pretty well. Um, spent two years there, and then came back and signed a five-year deal with the Phoenix Suns. Um, spent a few years there, and then got traded to Brooklyn and New Orleans. Um, decided that I wanted to take a quick break. As I mentioned, I took I spent three years here at Stanford, so I came back and finished my degree. Uh, I'm happy to, to be here and talking to you guys. As Zayla mentioned, I've been a, a early supporter of them, and not necessarily because of you know the basketball aspect, it's because of the people that they are. You know, and Zayla, Tunde, the whole crew, um, quality people. Uh, you know, with uh, a purpose, and uh, they're driven, and uh, I admire that. Always have, and. I uh, felt compelled to, to support that. So, um, anyway, uh, I'm open to any questions. I don't really like to talk too much. So, <laughs> so when I was getting minutes, uh, I probably averaged like 13 and seven. It was around the, the numbers that I put up. Um, uh, my specialty was really being a, an impact player without needing to get plays called for me. Right, so I'd get offensive rebounds, transition points, uh, you know, backdoor cuts. Uh, it was kind of always, it was just the, my tag, if you will, when we were playing against other teams, to say, okay, watch out for Josh because he's going to get, you know, he's going to impact the game without getting a play call. Uh, what was like the draft process um, from going from the end of your junior year to just right up to the NBA draft? Yeah, it was a. Uh, the most nerve-wracking time of my life, right? <laughs> um, you know, you, you work, I worked my entire life. You know, I put myself in position to get drafted. Uh, and going through the, the pre-draft combine, I ended up uh, breaking my hand, right? And so I'm, here I am training, uh, still training, trying to do the, the, you know, all the drills and everything with a big splint on my hand. Uh, and, you know, I was like, geez, of all times, right? Uh, but it was just, it was one of those moments where I just, I either went, you know, one way or the other, one direction or the other, and I chose to just stay positive about it. Uh, and if you, have you guys watched the NBA draft before? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when Adam Silver, well, back then it was David Stern, Adam Silver comes up, calls your name. Well, everybody in the green room knows maybe 30 seconds before because they, they, they bring you the hat. And so, um, you know, they called the fifth pick, which was uh, Devin Harris uh, to Dallas Mavericks. And then uh, the lady comes over to my table with the hat. And it was just one of those, oh, those yeah. moments, you know, where I just, you know, a culmination of all the work and the grind that I've been through. And here's this lady sitting with the Atlanta Hawks hat uh, for me. So it was a, an awesome, awesome experience. Um, one of the best experiences of my life. Through the ups and downs of NBA career or professional career, um, a lot of pressure in a lot of different moments. How did you mentally prepare or mentally stay stable? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
And there were times where I didn't. You know, I, well, from a preparation perspective, I didn't. I mean, and that's, this is something that's become more and more uh, prevalent nowadays. But I mean, for me back then, it was just tough enough, right? You just gotta just push through. Um, you know, and, and as time went on, I learned uh, about just, you know, being in the moment, um, you know, understanding, uh, you know, kind of where you are in your life, the blessings that you have, don't take yourself too seriously, uh, and, you know, just go out there and have fun. But what age did you really start to, like, believe that you could make it to the NBA or, like, go pro? And then, um, like, what was your biggest setback on that? So, um, give you a, a little context here. So when I was seventh grade, right, I was playing with um, one of the premier AAU teams in the country. And I was on the B team. And one of the guys got hurt, and that just moved me up to the A team by default because they needed another player. Um, and we went to the Nationals, um, and you know, I had never really been on that stage and I struggled big time, right? I was missing every shot, air balling. I mean, it just, it was terrible. Um, but that was the reflection point for me to go grind harder, right? So eighth grade year, I came back better. Ninth grade year, came back better. 10th grade year, I got invited to the Nike, uh, the Nike All-American camp. And that's where I really made a name for myself and got put on the national scene. Now, I came from a household where you know, you just you just grind, and there is no NBA aspiration. It's you know, work hard to get to college, right? And and that's what I did. So I didn't really have that in my mind until my junior year of college. To be honest with you, um, I, I I just felt like I was happy that I was able to get a college scholarship, um, and was obviously wanting to be my best self, but I didn't necessarily feel like. I was going to be an NBA player. Now it, it happened, and I was thankful for that, but um, that wasn't like uh, something that I expected to happen. Xander. Was it a hard decision um, choosing to go to the NBA after your junior year or coming back to college for your senior year? No. <laughs> so um, we actually had a conversation about this yesterday. One of the things from an athletic perspective, you know. You have to strike while the iron's hot. And not even athletics, in, in life, right? Strike while the iron's hot. Um, we had a great year at Stanford my junior year. We were on national TV almost every game. We were number one in the country. Um, and I was a big part of the team, right? I had some big games. And my thought process was I go to school to get a good job. I put myself in a position to get a good job, you know, to make a nice wage for myself. Um, so why spend another year risking that, risking injury, risking, you know, a bad season, what have you, when I have, you know, a position open for me to take that job uh, now. So that's why I left. Mm -hmm. Last King. Uh, when you were in Stanford, did you play with the Lopez players? Uh, no. So I played, I was there right before the Lopez players. If we were teammates with them, I might have won the national title, I think. But uh, <laughs> no, we didn't, we weren't able to. Play with, I wasn't able to play with him, unfortunately. Which player was the hardest for you to guard? Oh. <laughs> player, I don't know if you guys would even know who some of these players are. <laughs> um, the hardest player for me to guard was a dude by the name of Gilbert Arenas. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. What? Really? Gilbert Arenas. Uh, we know him. I, mean, he, I think there you know, were seasons where he averaged 30 plus. I mean, he, he could do it all. You know, he could so how shoot. Did you, huh? How did you try to guard him? Just hope he has an off night. You know, I mean, that's also all you really can do. You know, I mean, when you get with players like that, with, you know, that can just score at that level, you just try to make it as difficult for them as you can. You know, um, try to get them off their spots. Um, one thing Gilbert was doing back then that you know now more more commonplace is he was shooting well beyond the three point line, right? So a lot of guys didn't really do that much back then. Obviously now Steph has revolutionized that and everybody does it, but. You know, so that made you had to guard him, you know, further out on the court, which then allowed him to get into his package. So um, he was the hardest for me. To guard. Was never really guarding me. You know, he was probably guarding Joe Johnson on our team. Um, but uh, I mean, Tony Allen was one of them. Um, yeah, Tony Allen. Well, he was a he was a man. Oh, at the time. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, Boston. Boston. Um, uh, shoot. 
KG was another one, just because his intensity, and I didn't have to like match up with him, but just the impact he had on the game defensively. Um, Shaq was just massive. <laughs> you just deal with that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's obviously a ton of guys who are great defensively. Hey, on behalf of Team Spots, you've been a blessing with the nice 2019 exclusive camp shirt, man. 220 stains. Jay, and thanks for making it, man. Appreciate it, bro.